Hi, this is Larry. Today we're going to talk about the fourth key in our five keys to get a great job, and that is to prove you are the solution they need. To prove it in phone calls, in meetings and interviews, and in your written materials. What you need to prove is this. You have to prove you are the solution because you can do the job they need done, you fit into their team, and you provide a great return on investment. So we're going to, that's our focus in proving you are the solution they need. To provide solid information to make a good decision, you're going to only share information that applies to what they need. You don't give information about yourself that doesn't apply to their wants and needs. Second, you provide proof in the following situations, in information interviews, applications and resumes, phone calls, interviews and meetings, and reconnections after the interview and meetings. And the purpose of your interactions is to get a wow. How did you do that? Now, not all the time. Little wow, big wows, you mix them up. And the key to doing that is preparing what I call home run statements. The home run statement uses the baseball field as an outline for the statement. First base, you describe where you did something. Second base, you describe what you did. Third base, you describe the results that happened because of what you did. And to make it a home run, you apply it to them. Let me show an example. Here's an example. As supervisor at Acme Supply, I streamlined production lanes and put the right people in the right seats. As a result, we increased productivity by 87% in three months and 230% in two years. Are those the kind of results you want in your organization? Do you see how the statement gives them facts about where, what, the result, and then helps them nod their head and say, yes, that's exactly what I want. To prove you are the solution in setting up the meetings, remembering step three where you've asked questions beforehand, you will do this kind of a phone call. Hi, my name is Larry Stevenson. John and Mary on your team recommended I talk to you. Is now a good time for a two-minute conversation? Wait for their yes. John and Mary said that you want to increase productivity in your organization. Is that correct? So you verify what John and Mary said to you. They recommended I call you because... I increased productivity in one operation by 87% in three months and 230% in two years. I also opened three new market niches, which increased a productivity at another organization by 100%. Are those the results you want? And when they say yes, then it makes sense. When can we meet to discuss how I can help you achieve your goals. Now, if you'll notice in this phone call, the entire focus is on them. It is not on you. It's what they want. Mary and John said you want this. Is now a good time for two minutes. Is this what you really want? This is what I've done. Is that what you want? And when can we meet to schedule appointment to discuss how I can help you achieve your goals. That phone conversation we will get you into meetings. Now, in the interview, you answer all questions with one of four types of answers. One is you answer with what we call the dessert tray. In a restaurant, they bring you this tray full of delicious looking desserts and they allow you to pick the ones that interest you. You are going to present them with your dessert tray that applies to what they are interested in. And it will cover different things like your hobbies, your civic service, your uh, education and training, your past experience, your home run statements, and then saying, is that what you want? Let me give you an example.
Uh, when they say, tell me about yourself, you would answer from your dessert tray. Um, I love helping people achieve their goals. It's one of the things that I have done. I have worked in helping people in national associations, the United Way boards, and other civic organizations on the board to help improve the lives of people. I got my degree from the University of Southern California with a master's degree from USC in public administration. I have 25 years experience working in the nonprofit world as a manager and executive. For example, we opened 23 operations in 16 countries in a three-year period. I was part of the team that did the training and development, and we achieved our 12-month goals three months early. I was also part of a team that developed a workshop that was translated into 48 languages and went into 29 countries. Is that the kind of results that you're looking for? Dessert tray. Next, home run statements. We already talked about those. Those are the questions that want to know your experience and your skills, and you answer those with that home run statement. The third kind of question are questions that are asking you to take perceived weaknesses and make them positive. These are, tell me what's your biggest weakness. Tell me about a time you failed. Tell me about a, time, a worker that you had a hard time working with. Uh, tell me why you left your last job. These are easy to understand because they all have a negative in the question. The fourth kind of answer is one where you don't have enough information to answer, so you have to ask a question. This is, for example, the biggest one is, what do you expect as a starting salary? You don't have enough information, you have to ask a question. The reason they ask these is, one, to see if you will think on your head, on your feet, and if you can come up with it quickly. But the other reason is, companies don't want to hire people who go off half-cocked without enough information and then spend money and time on projects getting it wrong. So they want to see, are you smart enough to say, I need to know more information. By the way, all those silly, crazy questions like, uh, if you were a tree or if you were an animal, what would you be? These are answered with questions. So interviews, that's how you answer and prove you are the solution they need in interviews. In uh, by the way, these sites will help you identify the most common interview questions that are currently being given. We suggest you look it up and then you can practice and identify which kind each one is and practice your answers. Now we move on to analyzing and reconnecting or what people call follow-up after the interview. What we suggest is as soon as the interview is over, before you get distracted, you sit down and you ask yourself five basic questions and write down the answers. First, who did I meet with and what's the correct spelling for everyone you met with? Second, what went well in the meeting? Third, what did I say that I wish I had not said? And all of us do that, so we write it down and recognize what we did. Then, what didn't I say that I wish I had? That's where you write down all those great answers that come 10 minutes after the interview. And finally, what weakness did they possibly see in me? Where did I not meet their qualifications? And you write that down. You then use that to reconnect, not follow up, but reconnect after the interview to give them good information. Once again, you're providing good information on why they should hire you. Here's what we suggest. Take five or six thank you cards to the interview with you. Go someplace where you're not seen. Hand write a card emphasizing what went well and leave it with the reception for each person you met with. So the thank you card is immediate. If you can't do that, then send an email. But it emphasizes what went well. Three to four working days later, you call them and you fix what you wish you had not said. You say to them, I've been thinking about what you said, and I want to say this about that. Three to four working days later, you're going to call and give that great answer that came to you after the meeting. 
Then, three to four days later, you're going to phone and show what you have done to compensate for the weakness. For example, if it's a software package you're not familiar with, you know one, they use another. You go find someone in these interviewing intervening weeks, and you sit down with someone who knows that other software package, you learn as much as you can, and you call and you say, since we met, I have done this to learn about how that software works. I've learned this, this, this. I can see why you're using it. I've got two or three friends who have agreed to help me if I need any additional help. You end each of these phone calls with this phrase. I really want to work with you to achieve your goals. Is now a good time to set a second meeting? That light, don't overwhelm it, don't get pushy, but just give them the opportunity to say, yes, based on what you just told me, I would like to meet with you again. These are the ways to reconnect effectively after a meeting rather than saying stupid stuff like, have you made a decision yet, which just irritates them. Finally, you can't talk about proving your the solution without talking about written materials. So online applications, how to beat the applicant tracking system, that's the system that you enter your information into when you're doing online. Application Applicant tracking systems scan applications, resumes, and cover letters for predetermined keywords and then score them based on those matches and companies choose who they're going to talk to many times based on that score. So you ask personal context questions to identify the weighted keywords and phrases and you change the way you said it to the way they said it. Make sure it's the same thing. You're not lying. You're not exaggerating. You're just changing the way you said the skill is to the way they said it or the task to the way they said it. Then you exchange your wording for their wording so the tracker sees what it needs, gives you the high score. Next, you prepare a master application that you can customize in 10 minutes. First page, you call the document your name master resume dot doc. And the first page contains the headings and the players that do not change. Pages two through four contain all your home run statements. Second step is every time you're preparing a new resume, you use the master resume, you rename it your name again, and then the company name resume, you cut and paste the four to five most relevant state home run statements into the summary section, cut and paste three to four relevant statements into each of the other sections, and then you delete all the unused home run statements, leaving just the usable pages. Then you save it as a PDF so that you can upload it into the applicant tracking system. You do the same thing with cover letters. Page one, all the things that don't change. Page two, three, four, you have all your home run statements. You modify the introductory paragraph. You cut and paste the four to five most relevant statements into the body of the letter. You modify the closing paragraph. You delete all the unused pages. You turn it into a PDF and you upload it. These are the ways to prove you are the solution. And please recognize in this entire process, it's not about you. It's about what you can do to help them achieve their goals.